Using Excel's equals AI formula, did you know you can extract names from a list of sentences? How about create a table of virtually anything, like finding the top 10 countries by population? Well, these are just some small examples of what this function is capable of. So let me show you how to install it for free and five of its most incredible features to boost your productivity. To install this formula, it actually works as an add-in. So we just want to go to the homepage and click on add-ins to the right hand side. Here we'll go under more add-ins. And once we get this pop-up under the search bar, just look for ChatGPT. And we'll go for the second one, ChatGPT for Excel and click on add. We can just agree on their policy. And after a while, it should generate over here to the side, as you can see there. Right now, I'm on the free trial mode, so it should hopefully look exactly the same for you. So let's get started with the first and simplest feature, which is AI.ask. So over here, you can see that we have this Excel file, which you can download for free in the video description if you want to follow along. And the first question just asks, who is the CEO of Apple? So we can type equals AI dot and we'll get all of these options. So we'll go with the ask as we just have a question here. This is the prompt for us. It's basically what you're asking. You can put it in quotations as well if you wanted. We'll close a parenthesis and hit enter. And you can see that we get that Tim Cook is the CEO. So that's all looking correct. Now let's be honest, that's quite an easy question. We could have just looked that up on the internet. So let's go with something slightly harder. And over here it says to write an email telling my manager to reschedule our meeting to Friday as I'm on holiday. So hopefully this is a bit more challenging for it. We can type equals ai.ask and this is just our prompt. We'll close that and hit enter. Now let's see what it comes up with. So you can see here that it generated a subject and it's also got the manager name here as an input and a whole lot of text as well. So it's looking fairly professional in my opinion. So far so good. And finally, let's ask it for something a bit more Excel oriented. Like over here we have what Excel formula should I use to sum a list of values only if they're greater than five. So let's go ahead and do AI.ask here again. We'll select this prompt and close the parenthesis. So it says here that you can use the sum if, which is actually the same function that I had in mind. If we keep breathing, you can see that it even generates the entire formula for us. So it's really quite a powerful tool. All right, so that's the first and simplest feature. And it's actually quite similar to just ChatGPT. So let's do something a bit trickier with the AI.fill. So over here, you can see that we have this list of cities, their country and their continent. And we would like to continue this down. Now for this, we can actually use the equals AI.fill. Hit the tab key there. And it's important that we have these examples above. As you can see, we show it what, the, what we mean by a country and what we mean by the continent. So we'll just select these as our examples. Hit the comma key. And then the partial is the parts that are basically missing, right? Which are all of these cities over here. We can close the parenthesis and hit enter. Awesome. And now you can see that it seems to have filled all of these in correctly. Hopefully you're starting to see that this fill feature is very useful. But now if we look at this other scenario, we're going to do the same thing, but for companies trying to see what industry they're in and their headquarters. And some are quite famous companies like Nike or Apple. But we're also putting some that are maybe a bit more niche, like Specialized or Cannondale, which are bike manufacturers, I believe. So we'll go to equals AI.fill, hit the tab key there. And again, we'll put the example over here. We also want to select the headers there, comma, and the partial or the ones that we're still missing are all of these down here. Close up parenthesis and hit enter. And let's see what it does. Awesome. You can see that it's even found these smaller companies that maybe most of us wouldn't know where they're headquartered. Following the fill feature, in number three, we have the extract feature, which is quite similar to the flash fill. In case you're not familiar with it, let's take a look over here. So you can see that I have the first name of a person, the last name, and I would like to merge these two. So for this, we can use the flash fill. For it, we just need to type it once ourselves. So Sam Smith, and then I'm just going to select these and go to control E. This is what's known as the flash fill which basically does the same action as above. 
So you might think, all right, I want to do the same thing over here where it says my name is Sarah Smith and I just want to extract the name itself. So Sarah Smith and I want to do this for all the other ones. So I would hit the control E again, but you see that this time it doesn't quite work. This is Jadon Sancho, etc. And the reason is because they, these aren't consistent, right? Sometimes they have some words in front, other times they have them after and so forth. So it's not very easy for Excel to find a pattern. That's where this AI function comes in. So we would type equals AI.extract, hit the tab key there, and these are all our values. So let's select all of them, comma. And what do we want to extract? Well, just the names. We'll close up parenthesis and hit enter. Now you can see that this one does it perfectly. So it seems like it's superior to just this flash fill. Now let's try the same thing, but with emails. You can see over here, we have the same inconsistencies with the words before and after, but we just want to extract the emails. So you can see even some of them don't end in .com, like this one that ends in pwc.co.uk. So let's see how it manages ai.extract, hit the tab key there, and the values are all of these over here, comma, and we wanna extract their emails. Close the parenthesis and hit enter. And you can see it's even detected that the Sarah at PwC one is the email. While these features are great at making you more productive in Excel, if you still think you should learn the fundamentals of formulas, formatting, etc., you should check out our Excel for Business and Finance course. With our comprehensive curriculum, we cover everything you need to know about Excel, from formatting best practices and shortcuts, using complex formulas, building awesome visual dashboards, creating large dynamic financial models, and much more. This is basically the course I wish I had before working at an Excel-heavy corporate job. If all of that sounds interesting, check out the link in the description below to learn more. And if you want more than just Excel, you can also check out our other courses, including Power BI, Finance and Valuation, and much more. All right, back to the video. Next up in number four, we have the equals AI.translate, which is a bit more niche, but we'll cover that before we cover the fifth and probably most powerful feature. So over here, you can see that we have some text in English that let's say we wanna translate into Spanish. For this, we would just type equals AI.translate, hit the tab key there, and the value is going to be basically the whole text, comma, and what language do we want it in? In Spanish, let's say, and hit enter there. Awesome, there's a the translation and it's probably going to save you a bit of time compared to Google Translate. Even better, we could make a drop down here to switch around different languages. For this, we can go over to data and click on data validation, this tick mark right here. I want to get a list and I want that list to be all of the languages that let's suppose I wanna translate by. So let's say Spanish, comma, Japanese, comma, French. Let me just change the typo here, Japanese, comma, French, and let's say, comma, Arabic, and hit on OK. Now in this dropdown, if I switch to Japanese, you'll notice that all of this is going to switch in a second. How awesome is that? And now moving on to number five, we have the AI.table, after which we'll go over an awesome bonus feature. So let's take a look over here. We have a request for a table where it says to find the 10 biggest countries in the world by population. So we would just type equals AI.table, hit the tab key there, and the prompt is basically this part right here. We can close up parenthesis and just hit enter. You can see we have the full country list with their population, and it's all looking fairly accurate. Even better though, if we wanted to add some further headers, we can just change the prompt a bit. So instead of just by population, we could put a comma there and let's say also by continent and by surface area. Hit enter there and you'll see how all of this regenerates. Now what if we also wanted to have some structured columns? Up above over here, we didn't really have the column headers, but let's say down below that we want to have them like here and we don't want anything from the internet. Instead, we just want some random data like a list of random 10 people so for this, we can also go with equals AI.table, 
hit the tab key there. The prompt is that we want the list of 10 people, comma, and now we can actually use the headers, which are all of these headers that we have up over here. So let me just select all of them, close up parenthesis and hit enter. Awesome. Now you can see that it's using it correctly. These do look like first names, while these others look like last. Same thing with the ages, there's no absurd age like anyone that's 150 years old. Before we get into the bonus feature, one thing worth noting here is that in my experience, it doesn't work that well when you have larger data sets. Maybe you're asking for 10,000 people, then I don't think it works that well. Finally, in this bonus feature, let's take a look at this add-in inside of PowerPoint. So over here, I have a plain PowerPoint and I'm just going to click on the same add-in much like I did before, but this time it's called for PowerPoint. And now I want it to generate some slides. So I'll go to create from topic and let's say that I want seven slides. These slides are going to be on Messi versus Ronaldo, who's better. And I'm just gonna click on continue. Obviously this isn't a great prompt, but let's see what it's able to do. Nice, so we have these titles for each of the slides and we can just click on continue. Let's say I'm happy with this first template, continue again. Now let's see what it's able to generate for us. Awesome, so here we have all the seven slides. In my opinion, they need some work, especially on design, but that said, it's still pretty impressive. It's able to generate all of this. If you wanna learn other super useful add-ins, check out this video over here, or you can also take our Excel course over here to level up your Excel game. Hit the like and the subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.